안녕하세요. 그때 좀 뚱뚱했죠. I lost a lot of weight since then, since, especially since I came to Korea. In the background, you can see my siblings playing a game of Monopoly. I was sitting next to the Christmas tree with my new camera around my neck. As a kid, especially since then, I took a lot of pictures. I didn't take the normal kind of pictures, like taking pictures of my feet, my family, my friends, or of my toys. I used to take pictures of buildings. My grandfather was an architect, my brother is an architect, and since I was little, I also wanted to become an architect. In high school, I did an internship at an architectural firm, but then my parents would say, we don't need another architect in the family. <laughs> I know this sounds funny, but for me, it was quite a traumatic experience. I kind of lost the dream which I had when I was 16. But then I started taking more and more pictures. But at the same time, I also felt very bored at my hometown. My hometown is very small, only 6,000 people living there in northern Germany. And when I graduated from high school, I moved out, I moved to Cologne, I moved to the States, to Australia, and then I ended up in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, I did research for my master thesis on space and architecture in the films of Wong Kar Wai. At the same time, I also did a lot of photography, and I remember I was really impressed with the density of the city. At the same time, I also got interested in Korean film, and eventually, in 2005, end of 2005, I came to Seoul. Seoul also really impressed me with the scale and the size of the city. I mainly continued taking pictures of architecture or the city in a broader sense. In Seoul, I also I started a Korean language course I think I didn't do really a good job, otherwise I could do this presentation in Korean. <laughs> But at least I've got some pictures and video to show you, otherwise... Yeah, I never did my homework at um, language school, and I remember my teachers were always really upset with me. <laughs> They always said, uh, And one day, I went... Uh, on top of an uh, apartment building, the opposite of that one. I sneaked in there like a little kid, went to the rooftop to get the perfect shot. Then someone must have seen me because someone called the guard on me. When the guard finally found me, he walked me down the stairs. I was really nervous and I couldn't really explain myself why I was there. I think he's, he probably thought I was some sort of pervert. <laughs> But um, then I had my bike parked outside there. I quickly ran to my bike, jumped on there with my camera and tried to escape. But the guard, he must have trained for the Olympics, <laughs> an athlete in field and track, he immediately grabbed me by my jacket and I couldn't escape. Five minutes later, more guards, police and half of the tenants of the apartment block. Then I told you about the troubles at language school, so I had to call my um, roommate and she kind of rescued me from taking, being taken to the police. But at the same time, all these experiences and my time in Seoul, and especially through photography, I learned a lot about the social and urban landscape of Seoul. In 2008, I moved to an area which just was at the brink of construction. Three months later, it was supposed to be demolished. I didn't know anything about that at that time. And the landlord and the agent, they kind of talked me into a contract for a nice apartment. But then, I should have known because the agent, he told me he lived in Germany for 20 years. He didn't speak a single word of German. <laughs> But living in that neighborhood, it really inspired me to do a new series, which I called Zugzwang. In this series, I explored empty buildings before they got demolished, but after the tenants moved out. And kind of the demolishment, which already took place in the spaces, they showed me a lot about the tension between the construction companies and the, ten the tenants in that neighborhood going on. That photo series kind of inspired me to do a music video with my creative partner, Nia Darling. 
We did a music video for a song called Senior Living. The video is about an older couple which struggles with the hardships within the city of Seoul. They kind of team up and they become criminals. They steal a Ferrari, take it down to Hunton River, and suddenly they get romantic with each other. <laughs> But after a while, their relationship kind of fades out. They don't love each other like they used to do before. But then, eventually, the woman becomes pregnant, and at a picnic at Han River, finally, she goes into labor, and the almost father gives birth to, not a baby, a chicken. The disappointed father throws the chicken into Han River. At the back, you see a skyline of new-built apartment blocks. But the woman She takes revenge, and she shoots the father in the head. Sorry. <laughs> a lot of my film work is inspired by my photography. As you can see, at that location, I also took a photograph. That's a picture of my serious urban landscape. It's kind of a change in my photography, because in urban landscape, I suddenly integrated human beings, but also I try to make a connection between rural and urban space. With my more recent series, Urban Nature, I try to continue the similar, uh, similar idea. In Seoul, I found these rural paintings on walls within the cityscape. For me, these paintings kind of express a longing for the rural of people who mainly live in the city, in this country. Last year, when I went back for a trip to Germany, I kind of felt that this nostalgia is also a feeling I personally share. In my hometown, I took some images with my snapshot camera, and suddenly I realized how beautiful the scenery is. Back, I told you when I was a child, I hated the place. Then going back to Seoul, I went through these images over and over again, It's something normally I don't do with my snapshot photographs. And that whole experience led me into doing a new music video. I teamed up with my friend Stuart Howe. This music video for a song called Sin City is about a fish who escapes from the countryside and he goes to the city of Seoul. After hitchhiking to the city, he makes a couple of nasty experiences within Seoul He's lost in Myeongdong, and finally, eventually, he finds a girl. They go to a love motel, but then she turns out to be a prostitute. She asks for money, the fish doesn't have money. <laughs> so she calls her manager, and the manager beats the poor Nemo almost to death. But then the next day, Nemo is found by the cleaning woman, She washes the fish, the half-deflated fish, down the toilet, and then the fish through Han River is brought back to his home country, uh, to his hometown at the East Coast. He reunites with his owner, and they're ever happy after again. <laughs> <laughs> But the experience in Sin City is something which is very much connected to me. Once I came from the rural and I escaped to the, to the city, as I told you before. But uh, it might sound like a cliché, because it's almost like we always look for the things which we don't have. But in conclusion, I can say that through my film work and my photography work, I found deep down inside a, rural connect a connection to rural space. And I had to take a step back to make this emotional return. Thank you very much for your attention.